Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to you. My name is Nick and welcome to channel N Jenkin if this is the first time you found it. We've recently finished covering 50 reviews of the Commodore 64, so like we do with all systems, whenever we get to a multiple of 50, we have a bit of a recap in a video like that. Gives us a bit of a chance to have a look at the ones we've done so far. And if you see a game that you particularly like but missed the review the first time round, give you a chance to track it down and show it a bit of love. So, here we go! First off is Stunt Car Racer, the first Commodore 64 game I reviewed and this one absolutely blew me away as it has done on every system. As you can see there's a scan lines on here because it's being emulated, I solved that by about the third review. But this gives you a number of tracks, the inertia on here is absolutely brilliant and you do feel like you're going over every single bump. Now I had to remind myself this was just working off 64K. Uh, graphics are good, frame rate is brilliant and a great game like it is on every system. Manic Miner, slightly better on the Commodore, um, well no, slightly better on the Spectrum than the Commodore 64 but it's very very close. Um, the time is a slightly different to the Spectrum version, it plays ever so slightly quicker but uh, you'd have to get it under a microscope. A good conversion here, um, Matt, Matt Smith did the original Manic Miner and um, this one plays good too. All 20 levels are there and it's accurate pull or recreation so I could recommend Manic Miner, a very good game by Bug Bite. A Buggy Boy, uh, a game that's curiously better on the Commodore 64 than it is on the Commodore Amiga. Sometimes it works a bit like that way, where 8-bit is better than 16-bit. The car on the Spectrum version is way too big, this one has got it just about right. The arcade version is better, don't get me wrong, but this is heaps of fun as well. Great colour, great sound, I really enjoy playing this game. Good, good stuff. A number of different uh, courses to play. And you're never going to get bored of this one, um, you know, it's classic arcade. Blasteroids, influenced by asteroids from the arcades. Um, it's alright this, but I think it could have been a lot better. It's a little bit of a stinker for my mind, and I got a bit bored quite quickly. Um, you know, I do like the basic polygons of asteroids rather than this recreation. Um, a kid might have liked it for a little bit, but there's much better games out there to get involved yourself with. Hopefully we'll come up against some other Asteroid clones a bit later down the line. The Great Journey Sisters. Um, now I was really amazed how close this was to the actual uh, Amiga version. The SID chip is doing excellent there of rend rendering the sounds. The levels are very accurate, they look very much the same as the Commodore Amiga ones did. So yeah, really good game. If you're into platformers and you're into sort of like Super Mario clones, which is like heavily influenced from, you can't go wrong with this. A number of cool power-ups, controls really well, a little bit of inertia as well in the uh, air. Pit Stop 2, sequel to Pit Stop, which I haven't quite reviewed yet. It's two player, either you and a human player, or you against the computer. You must win the race over one lap without crashing into any of the other cars. It moves really quick, sound is good again. So as you can tell, when I first come to the Commodore 64, I was reviewing the best games um, out there. Um, it starts to dwindle uh, when we get near the end of this, but still of a high standard, and I'm sure just like the Spectrum games I'm reviewing, we just, then we're just looking for hidden gems. Aquaplane, uh, this is a, a novel sort of game, also available on the Spectrum, that's why I reviewed it on the Commodore 64. You could tow this water skier behind your boat, and you must um, get round all the obstacles. First of all, it's just basic logs to go round, then there's sailboats, and in the end there will be sharks. And you have to watch that you don't crash yourself, the boat, or the water skier into any of the boats here. Um, takes a bit of um, skill to get used to, but it is an addictive game. IK Plus, absolutely stunning and probably the best 8 bits um, fighting game I've ever played. Music again is brilliant of a very high standard. There's three players here, you, it's me against two computer components here. And you must go up the belts by doing a number of tasks, um, sh basically beating these two people here first of all. And then um, knocking away sort of like bouncing balls but a brilliant game you must get this if you have got a Commodore 64 or into fighting games. David's Midnight Magic well it's a little bit lackluster but it's pinball the ball physics are questionable sometimes but it does what it says on the tin the layout is a little bit like Black Knight the, the, the real pinball table um, if you're aware of that of your pinball ones I wouldn't have been too disappointed about this back in the day but it doesn't do a great deal 
uh, quite basic sounds, but it plays all right really for what it is. You just get one table, as you do with all of these 8-bit pinball games I've seen so far on the Commodore 64. A classic for you, Ghosts and Goblins from the arcades. This one plays great as well. You control uh, Sir Arthur and he must go over a number of goblin filled and zombie filled stages to rescue his girlfriend who's been kidnapped, who quite often they are in these games. It's as hard as now as this and there is um, a remastered version of the Commodore 64 which you might look at at some point. But if you like challenges this is good and it's got an atmosphere all of its own. All the versions of this I've ever played are super difficult but they're really cool too. Jet Set Willy, they ruined this really on the Commodore 64. Um, this music, I don't know where they got that from. Uh, the, the stairs, normally it's just a diagonal line to walk down here. They've done a staircase which um, slows down the action uh, quite a bit here. I'm not a fan of it and some of the levels are flawed in some way that you can't actually get past because they put the enemies in the wrong position, either too low there. So there's much better versions out there. We'll be looking at Jet Set Willy 2 a bit later on. Super Cycle, this comes from a recommendation, as a lot of these did. Moves really, really fast. I'm a great fan of this game immediately. Still need to review Super Hang On, but it'd be, I'll be surprised if it's as good as this one. Um, breakneck speed, if you're into your fast racers, then this is a good one to have. As good as Pit Stop 2 for my money, but this time you're on a bike and it's single player. Different stages to go across, just go as quickly as you can before the time runs out, going through different checkpoints. Hooray! Advanced Pinball Simulator, a bit better than David's Midnight Magic, but I'd have to say it is flawed again because it's very hard to get the ball uh, up the left hand side of the table. You're aiming for something that's very, very small, like a very small gap, and um, I didn't actually do it in the review and I haven't managed to do it since. Um, again, it's a wide body table. If you're into pinball, you might get a bit of fun out of this, but I found it eventually frustrating that I couldn't access the left hand side of the table, but not bad otherwise. Speedball, a game which I thought would be impossible to recreate on an 8 bit system, but here it is on the Commodore 64. I first played this on the Commodore Amiga, and it's an accurate recreation of that one. The graphics are ever so slightly inferior, but not to um, a, a great deal. You can see how the Amiga version has been possibly converted from this. And it's a good game uh, in its right. It does have a sequel called Speedball 2, funny enough, and we'll look at that as well. But this is quite addictive. Um, one or two players, and two players is always a lot more fun. Grand Prix Circuit. This is a precursor to one of my favourite games by Accolade called uh, Test Drive. You have a choice of three cars, a Ferrari, a Williams or a McLaren, which were the top cars at the time. I must go around, I think, about eight or ten tracks, um, qualifying first of all, and then going off the grid and winning all the races in a championship. All the drivers are fictitious, there's no official F1 license on this one, which it doesn't matter a great deal. Some cars are easier to control than others, they have different speeds on, but you'd get a lot of fun out of that. Hungry Horace. Um, now this game was converted from the Spectrum version, a lot of people wouldn't have seen Horace on the Commodore 64. It's a bit bright, the white is very super bright, so you might need dark glasses on to play this. Um, good to see him on the Commodore 64, but his spiritual home is a ZX Spectrum, I think, and always will be. But um, good to see, uh, nonetheless, heavily influenced by Pac-Man. Uh, instead of ghosts, you're being chased by park rangers each time, and um, it's four screens to do. Uh, night Mission, pinball, but based off an air raid. So basically, you're a bomber bombing someone or, or other. The ball moves the quickest I've ever seen in an 8-bit pinball game. It does have a bit of ball blur behind it, too. You can change the colour on the table um, also and the border as well. Um, got the best of sounds, I didn't really know what I was doing but it's a question of just hitting targets and surviving it as long as you can. So this is a worthy pinball game, a thumbs up for that one. Speedball 2, Brutal Deluxe, the sequel to the first one. The arena on this is absolutely huge and it's another real good work of coding that they managed to get this work at all. You have a league or a cup and you must basically smack the other team's heads in by getting the most um, goals you can. There's coins to collect for upgrades for your players and an active transfer market. This one would have kept a kid going for quite some time. I first played this on the Commodore Amiga again. I'm very surprised to see it in this one, but this is good. Bubble Bobble. I was a bit underwhelmed by this game myself, but a lot of people regard it as a classic, possibly because I didn't know fully what I was doing. You must clear all the enemies on each stage. Once you do, the level goes down one, and then you've got an increased number of baddies, more power-ups, and increased difficulty. 
naughty. Bubble Bobble, it's maybe a little bit too cute for me, like Rainbow Islands is, and another of other ones in this series. We will look at Rainbow Islands in this first 50. Hooray! Like it or hate it, really. Lotus Esprit Turbo Challenge. Um, I don't think they should have attempted this. I didn't like it on the Spectrum version. And Commodore 64, although slightly better than that, it's struggling as well. The problem is, this is really is a Commodore um, Amiga game. Uh, the draw rate is very, very difficult for the size of the car. Because you're only controlling half of the screen, because um, you're in one player here, um, it's very impossible. If it was a full screen, you might have half a chance. Frame rate isn't brilliant because it's tempting to do a lot. It's a brave effort, but it doesn't quite work. Turbo Outrun, genius game, much better than the Commodore Amiga version, unlike Lotus, and we've gone down the other way. Um, you've got to go through various checkpoints, different routes you can take. Um, actually, I don't think there is different routes you can take on Turbo Outrun. It's Outrun, but different weather conditions, same sort of thing. Go through checkpoints and go as far as you possibly can. We might look at the original Outrun later on down the line, but Turbo Outrun was an advancement of that, and you can have boosts as well, like Nitros, if you will. Rainbow Islands, sort of like in the series of Bubble Bobble. Again, very, very cute. Um, it's like... Um, eating 10 donuts and feeling a little bit ill, but the gameplay is there. You must advance up the screen uh, before the flood comes along and you drown. Um, a nice gentle learning curve. I always seem to get stuck on about the fourth level, really. Uh, the chap looks a little bit different to the Amiga version, and the Amiga version he looks a bit like Eric Cartman. Here he's got black hair. Uh, it's a good game if you like platformers, you'd like this one. Kick off, for some reason this is being played horizontally on the Commodore Amiga it is vertically and it works better as a vertical game. The players are very very slow. Um, any kickoff game I've played before, it's frantic action either way. Uh, that's the uh, the style of it. This is just way too slow, attempting too much. Ball control is poor. Um, you know, horizontal play just doesn't work for this type of game. Be interested to see what kickoff two looks like. How long we're we gonna have to wait for kickoff two? Oh look, it's kickoff two. This one's going vertically up the screen. Again, it's a little bit slow, but it's better than the first one, but not by a great deal. The programming is flawed, so you could be at a goal up or something, and it goes into injury time, and injury time lasts as long as the actual match itself, and you think, what the hell is going on here then? So if you've got it on the Amiga, then play it on the Amiga. Don't bother playing it on the Commodore 64. If you only owned a Commodore 64 back in the day, I suppose this was a pretty good substitute, but it has got quite a lot of flaws. Power Drift from the arcades. This is a real good version. Again, better the Amiga version that was attempting too much. This is scaled down from that. You control a, a buggy and you're against numerous different opponents. If you qualify in a good enough position, then you will unlock uh, other tracks or get to the next stage. Great undulation in this, which I'm always a fan of. Uh, you can crash into the other opponents, but they might push you into a bit of a spin. Good frame rate, but it could have been ever so slightly better, but that's being extra picky. Commando, one of my favourite games ever. It's a fantastic run and gun. Think of run and gun games, you'll think of Commando. Again, there is a special edition available of this, which we also had a, a, a run through of, but we'll just stick it to this in this roundup of the top 50, or the first 50. Uh, levels are the same as the arcades there, one through to I think 8 or is it 10, 8 or 10, something like that, but it gets increasingly difficult as you go through, which you would expect, heaps and heaps and heaps of fun. Micropro Soccer, probably the best 8-bit football game I've ever played on an 8-bit system, only because it's easier to control. To control. I didn't do too well in the review, but you can only get gradually better. And at least you've got a chance with this. It's not a question of just keep booting the ball up the field and hoping for the best, hoping one of your strikers gets hold of it. There's a number of different mo modes on this, and the graphics are good. Also, I highly recommend MicroPro Soccer. It doesn't get much better than this in 8-bit football. Space Taxi, a brilliant game, one I'd only just heard of. The speech on this is brilliant. It's set in the future and you must fly your taxi from people hailing the cab on different bits of the screen, land without crashing, pick them up and take them to another landing pad where they want to go. As a kid, I would have invented a great story from what's going on, who I'm picking up and stuff, but brilliant, brilliant, addictive game. I did crash quite a few times on here, I have to admit. So here's my taxi going down, picking up that guy that's held the cab. 
Star Wars converted from the arcade cabinet, a little bit slower on the Commodore 64 version than the ZX Spectrum, just the way that the game is um, coded, its processor, or the computer is built up. Number of different stages, first of all you must fight TIE Fighters, then you advance on the Death Star, then do a trench run and blow the thing up. Hooray, what could be more fun than that? It's okay, but because I grew up with the Spectrum version, that is slightly quicker, and I favour that one, and I've since played it on the Amiga, which is a bit quicker as well, as you would expect. A uh, Soccer's Pinball. Very disappointed with this one. I played it during the World Cup, because I was in. I love pinball, and I was in the mood for it, but the, the ball is uh, very unpredictable. It goes off at strange angles. The flippers are a bit sticky sometimes, and that ruins the whole um, experience, really. If you've got inaccurate flippers that stick, pinball as a game sort of like dies. It looks nice as a layout, it's nice as a concept, which is annoying to play and doesn't play very well at all, in my humble opinion. Test Drive, another game I first played on the Commodore Amiga. How does it do on the 8-bit Commodore 64? Well, it doesn't do too bad. The car slides around a bit more. You're up in the mountains over a number of stages. You've got a choice of cars you can pick. If you complete all the stages without crashing too much, uh, you'll get given a time and you'll get to keep the car. But they don't actually deliver it in the real world, so it's a little bit of a con there. Plays good. Would have loved this uh, back in the day if I had it on this system. It does a really good job and um, yeah, highly recommended. The Empire Strikes Back, the sequel to Star Wars of course, uh, a vector polygon game based on the same engine as Star Wars but this time uh, you're fighting uh, Imperial Probots on Hoth, uh, then the um, At-At and then you're in an asteroid storm um, aboard the Millennium Falcon. So, Recreating aspects from the movie. Slightly better than the first game, but it's more of the same. There I go, I fired a cable there to try and bring down an at at. Or Imperial Walker, as they're known. Night Racer was a budget game. It doesn't seem that there's too much to it, really, but as a budget game, brilliant. It's all about endurance racing. You can see on the bottom left, there's a very, very long map, and it's divided into quite a lot of stages. You must avoid getting held up by bumping into traffic and beat your opponent at the same time for bonus points. Uh, quite good. Uh, you might get a bit bored after a while. The scenery doesn't tend to change, so what you're seeing now is practically the whole game. It just gets increasingly more difficult. Return of the Jedi, the third of the Star Wars games, again converted from the arcades, but this time they've ditched the need for vector graphics. They've gone for this, like, um, oblique view. First of all, you're an Endor in a speeder bike, controlling Princess Leia. Then you're fighting the uh, uh, Death Star Lord, the Millennium Falcon, to try and blow it up. And also, there'll be a, a, another stage where you're an Endor again in an, uh, a Scout Walker. And also in the Millennium Falcon and X-Wings against a Super Star Destroyer. It's very rare, it's worth doing. Jet Set Willy 2, a lot better than the first game. They corrected a lot of the problems. You see the jagged staircase is now uh, a diagonal line. A lot of the um, aliens that are put in the wrong place, or the enemies, have now been corrected, making stages much more doable. I still prefer the ZX Spectrum version, but this was heaps of improvement over the first game. Screen seems a bit wider on the Commodore 64, just the way it's laid out. There are some few differences, but not enough to annoy you. Uh, Tap Up. Now, this is a really fun game, converted from the arcades. Uh, it's over different stages, different bars. You must, um, as a barman, get lots of beer to all these patrons until they go away. Collect out the beer glasses without them smashing. If a patron gets to the end without a beer, they will throw you across the bar top and you'll lose a life. If a glass smashes, again you will lose a life and have to start again. It starts with this cowboy bar, then goes to like a racing bar, and ends with a space bar, which I never actually got to, and there you're serving a so that's quite varied, isn't it? Hero, a very novel game which I first played on the Atari 2600. The Commodore 64 builds on that with improved graphics. Some might say the simplicity of the Atari 2600 wins, but I, I like this version as well. You control a uh, rescue miner with a helicopter pack on his back. You must go down, uh, solve different obstacles, um, go the right path to rescue trapped miners without bumping into any of the nasties or lava flows or what have you. Uh, a puzzle game and a good puzzle game game. Boulder Dash, a classic on the Commodore 64, plays a lot better on this than it does on the ZX Spectrum. You must collect all the diamonds, which I'm sure you know by getting a par through here, without any of the boulders falling on you. As soon as you pass underneath them, they will fall down, so don't hang around. As soon as you've got all the diamonds uh, without and you've got enough time, you just make it to the exit and you'll get to the next stage, which is probably going to be increasingly more difficult. A great game and some great sounds on this as well, some great sound effects. 
Bruce Lee, uh, a platform game uh, based on uh, the martial artist uh, Bruce Lee. You must go through different stages collecting lanterns and different objects whilst avoiding the attentions of Yamo, a sumo wrestler, and the Black Ninja. They will uh, try and get in your way, try and kill you, and generally ruin your progress. A real good game. I've been told to have a look at Bruce Lee too, so we'll check that down. Um, Yamo in this one is green. I don't know why that should be. In other versions, he isn't. Uh, booty. Um, a lot more colour on this version than the ZX Spectrum. It is flawed in a, in a certain way, because sometimes, a bit like this, you could be trapped without anywhere to go. There's a pirate there coming to get me, but essentially you must collect keys to get through different doors and collect all the booty on this pirate ship. You are a cabin boy, a quite dishonest cabin boy, because you're trying to steal all the gold. But I don't know where you're going to put it, because he's only got small pockets. Very, very weird. So that one is booty. And a similar sounding one is Batty, but a completely different game. It's a breakout clone, but a breakout clone with a difference, because this one has got lots of different weapons for you to unlock. You can teleport to different stages, or the next stage if you hit the right thing. And all the time you might get uh, an alien trying to bump into you, or deflect the ball and try and kill you. So destroy all the bricks, and then you're on to the next stage, unless you get a power up of course and can avoid it. Different speed levels you can select here, so if you don't like the way the bat's moving, you can uh, change that in the control. So Spy Hunter moves very fast, this one, prefer it on the ZX Spectrum, although arguably this is more accurate to the arcades and a more a realistic game. It's James Bond in a stunt car, you drive along avoiding all the traffic and try and last as long as you possibly can. You can turn into a boat as well and occasionally your support vehicle will turn up and you drive through the back of that and then you'll be given an extra weapon like a smoke cloud or a missile for taking out later helicopters. Hooray! Bomb Jack. Now, although this is a good game, the problem with this one is it doesn't give you much room to play with. The screen is a very, very cramped compared to other versions of the game, making it almost impossible to complete. You keep pressing fire, the um, bomber man will um, glide, but not to any great degree. And I found progress on this very difficult because the limited game area you've got to play with. So it's a shame. I prefer other versions of this game a lot better. Wet Mans Rally, a classic on the ZX Spectrum, but unfortunately it doesn't play overly well on the Commodore 64. The reason behind this is um, overtaking is incredibly difficult to a point where opposing traffic will come at you like a magnet, it will deliberately crash into you, uh, and that just makes it unplayable in my mind. Also as well, it doesn't give you too much time to get through uh, each checkpoint, so just a couple of crashes and then it's game over. Um, it's, most of the time you won't actually get to the first checkpoint, which is a big shame really. Really disappointed with this one. Automania, uh, the very first of the Wally Week games. Uh, in this one, he's a mechanic and over two screens you must assemble a parts of your car you see on jacks there. Once you've done that, you the car will descend and then it's on to the next one. Very difficult to jump over things, a very, very difficult game, but was a precursor to games like Everyone's a Wally and Herbert's Dummy Run and Pajama Rama, which we might come to uh, later on. Plays almost identical to the ZX Spectrum version I played when growing up. Burger Time, an absolutely brilliant game. If you haven't come across this before, it's from the arcades, and this Chef Pepper must assemble huge burgers by walking over them like that. Once we've got all four burgers in the bottom of the screen, it's on to the next stage. All the time you're being chased by other fools like an egg, a pickle, and the occasional sausage, so don't bump into them. But you can kill them. If you time it right, you can get the burger to land on your head, which, or well, on their head, which is always very satisfying. There we go, so I've killed that one. Brilliant. Chucky Egg. Different speed levels on this. It looks very different to any other version of Chucky Egg I've uh, played. Uh, Hen House Harry must go round collecting all the eggs and avoiding the birds uh, and then get on to the next stage. A cute platformer but plays better on the ZX Spectrum in my mind. But what this one's got, which the ZX Spectrum didn't have, is different uh, modes of play in terms of speed. There's a manic speed where it goes millions of miles an hour, which I found was great fun. So it's in its credit, Chucky Egg. Bomb Jack 2. Now, I was told this was originally supposed to be a uh, Thundercats game, which explained why the Thundercats music is playing. Um, it doesn't play much like uh, Bomb Jack, and um, I'm confused on this one. It's about you can move to different levels by going up and down, but there's not too much um, else you can do here. Um, I wasn't very good, big surprise. Thundercat music um, disturbed me a little bit, but there we go, Bomb Jack 2. Would have preferred it to be a Thundercats game. Hmm. 
and we're all off to the pub for darts 180. Now you could got to work your way down from 201 and then finish on a double. There's lots of opponents to play in this one. Here's some beer belly fellow. Um, did I beat him? Well, you'd have to check out the review. There's a championship where it randoms up who you're going to be playing in the next round. They do get gradually better. And um, my one complaint of this is once you get used to it, you'll be getting 180s all the time because there's no time limit to this actual throwing. So you uh, line up the hand as roughly as you can. And the 50th game we covered was Tubin. I love this on the Commodore Amiga. This version is okay, but for my mind it could have been a little bit better. There's a game I've been told to play called Dizzy Down the Rapids, which we might have a look at as well, which is the same uh, general idea. But you play this um, this guy in a rubber tube. It's one or two players. If you dawdle around, a, uh, a crocodile will turn up and kill you and burst your bubble. But it's, you've got to get as far as you can, get uh, upgrades and um, cans you can fire, and there we go. So I hope you like looking at these first 50 games we had a, a, a look at on the Commodore 64. Um, I'm glad I've started reviewing this system. I am enjoying it so far. So here's to the next 50. Um, thank you to everyone that's commented on those videos and subscribed, helping the channel going. If you want to help a bit more, there's patreon.com slash njenkins to so take a look at that. Until next time, take great care of yourself and a very fond goodbye. Goodbye.